Hi, my name is Rachel Dernwind, and I read quite a few short stories and poems for this week and just wanted to talk about a few of them that I read. I read Everyday Use by Alice Walker. I felt like I really resonated to this short story because it was talking about the mom. She worked really hard on her yard. She worked really hard for her family by preparing the meals. And I feel like I just gravitate towards her. I also am a mom and I make all the meals that we eat. We rarely go out to eat. I'm constantly making sure that my house is super clean and that my yard is pristine. So I'm constantly out there mowing and cleaning up the landscaping and planting a garden. So I just felt like I really gravitated towards the mom in this story. Then Dee came along and she was super flashy, all about herself. She wore fancy clothes, flashy jewelry, and she just made everything be about herself. She even insisted that she take items from the home. They were sitting down to eat and she's like, I must have this. And then she was walking through the house and she's like, I must have the quilts that were made. So it was... Things like this that just made me not like Dee at all in the story because I don't think we should be so self-involved that we just think everything should be about us. Um, why do we need to spend extra money on flashy clothes and flashy jewelry? We don't need to be doing that. And why does she insist that everything be for her? Like, that's not right at all. So one of the main parts of the story that really spoke to me was when the mom pointed out that Maggie made the quilts. She learned how to make quilts from her grandma. She made these quilts. She poured her blood, sweat, and tears into these quilts, and yet Dee was insistent that she have these quilts. I really loved how the mom stood up and you know, just took charge. And she was like, no, you are not going to have the quilts because they belong to Maggie. She made the quilts. So I think this story just really resonated with me because some people can be so possessive in nature and I don't want to associate with those kind of people. I don't want to have anything to deal with them. And I just want to continue working hard, providing for my family, keeping a clean house, keeping a clean yard, and just kind of following the storyline that Alice Walker wrote in this about everyday use, because that is how I just kind of go about life, just doing it every day, the same basics. The next um, thing that I read was a poem, and it was called Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. I absolutely loved this poem. It started out with my very first favorite line that I wanted to share saying, you do not have to be good. This, I mean, honestly, it could have been the entire poem, and that line was just perfect. I am a perfectionist. I strive for perfection in everything that I do, whether it be at home or with my kids or at work. I am full of anxiety and full of stress because I want to be 100% perfect. But in our lives, we cannot obtain perfection. That is impossible. So I am constantly riddled with guilt and self-doubt and self-worth because I am not reaching that perfection that I place on myself to strive at all times. So this poem by Mary Oliver, I just felt like it just... She's giving me that peace. She's letting me take a deep breath and saying, you don't have to be good. You just have to be you. You just have to be your best self. And I just absolutely loved this poem. Um, the poem also continues about how Mary Oliver was stating, go out into nature. Be like the wild geese who are flying around. Enjoy the gorgeousness that is surrounding us that we find in nature. And I have read so many self-help books where they say you should just become one with nature. And I really feel like what that is trying to tell us and what this poem by Mary Oliver is trying to tell us is that we just need to go outside, be by ourselves, be in that peaceful surrounding where we're not surrounded by our phones or distractions or a book or watching TV, we are just literally soaking in nature and soaking in our own thoughts and feelings. And I really feel that this is what this poem did was try to tell us just get in touch with those inner feelings. The ending of the poem was telling us that we are going to have feelings of despair. We're going to have those feelings of self-doubt and self-worth, but we just really need to learn how to process those. And by stepping out into nature, seeing the wild geese fly over our heads, we can learn that we don't have to be good. Best poem ever. Um, another thing that I found in this poem was, one of my other favorite lines was, it says, the world 
offers itself to your imagination. I love this line. Mary Oliver is telling us, go out into the world, go out into nature. Imagination is there. You know, I think of myself when I was a little kid and I would gather some dirt and I'd put it in a little bowl and I'd pour some water in and I'd mix it together and I'd make a mud pie and I'd sprinkle in some leaves and some twigs and some like dandelions and I'd make myself a mud pie. That was all imagination. That was all found within nature. And we can't find that if we're going to be sitting on our phones all the time or scrolling on the computer or watching Netflix. It's Mary Oliver is literally telling us to go out into nature and discover our imagination, see where it takes us. And I love how this told us this. So this week in our reflection of our self-attentiveness, I found that I just need to get out into nature more. I just need to go out on a hike. I need to go for a walk. And I just need to be in tune with myself. And I love how her poem taught us that and this week's self-attentiveness taught us that. The last short story I read was The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Make sure you are sitting down for this story because it has so many twists and turns in it that just makes you want to vomit. Um, the story starts out on a summer day and they're just walking through the village. And I just felt like this story so much resonated with me because I grew up in a small town and everybody knew everybody and everybody gathered in the town square and everybody got together and that's what they were doing in this story. So it just made me chuckle because that's exactly what Shirley Jackson was conveying in this story because that is exactly what a small town is like. One of my favorite lines in here is where she actually said the black box grew shabbier each year. This, I maybe other people don't find this line interesting, but I actually do because to me, one, in a small town, you are not focused on the modern necessities of the world. So people in a small town aren't going to have the brand new flashiest flashy of things and all the gadgets and gadgets that people might have because they focus on what they already own. We do not need to go out and buy something flashy if we already own it. So the black box that they use for this lottery is the same one that they use year after after year and hence it grows shabbier each year but guess what it is still productive and it still holds value so we don't need to be going out and buying brand new things and that's what I love how Shirley Jackson mentions it um another of my favorite lines also which may not be a favorite line of others but it states although Mr. Summers and everyone else in the village knew the answer perfectly well and this is when they called out for Clyde Dunbar, but they were like, oh, Clyde broke his leg. And they're like, well, who's going to draw for Clyde? And they're like, well, his son can do it. And oh, his son is 16. Well, he's basically an adult. He can draw for him. And I love how everybody in the small town knew all of this. They knew Clyde broke his leg. They knew his son was 16 years old. And just like this line stated, everyone in the small town knew each other perfectly well. And it just makes me chuckle because this is exactly like a small town. Um, and then comes the ending of the book with the most shocking twist of all. I literally gasped out loud. I still am going to be just shocked by this story for a few weeks, I feel like. I'm not going to give it away. But it ends with the line, it isn't fair, it isn't right. And I just felt like that had such deep meaning because sometimes the ways of the past, the way that our ancestors did it, the way that our family used to do it, might not be right. It might not be the same steps that we want to follow. And so sometimes creating new traditions, sometimes letting go of the past and creating our own traditions is actually necessary to do. Because in this story, this should not have happened. I don't want to give it away, but it should not have happened. And I feel like we need to make changes in our life so that we can all have a brighter future. So thank you for going on my self-attentiveness journey for this week. And I will see you guys all next week.